Hello from one of the most beloved spaces at Shandon Presbyterian Church. I know how eager you are to be back here. And I want to reassure you that both the session and the reopening task force continue to work diligently and faithfully on your behalf. I'm very happy to share with you that at our most recent meeting, session approved taking some initial steps toward reopening. They are small steps, but if all goes well, they will lead to next steps and next steps after that. I'll explain more about what that looks like in a moment. But before any of that, I want to share a personal word, and I hope you'll indulge me. It has been a challenge to come to a new city and a new congregation at a time when we can't do things the way we are used to doing them. And it grieves me deeply how that has slowed the process of getting to know you, really getting to know you, getting to know not just what your names are and what committees you are a part of or what Sunday school class you attend or what your favorite hymn is. I'm eager to know all of that, of course, but I'm also eager to know the things that make your heart jump for joy and the things that keep you up at night, worried or afraid. I want to hear about the dreams you have for yourself and for the church as a whole. I can't wait to meet your pets and share a real cup of coffee, not just a virtual one, and watch you greet one another on a Sunday morning with a hug and listen as you raise your voices together in prayer and praise. There is a real ache in my heart every day that those things don't happen. I want you to know that. I want you to know because I'm acutely aware that for as much as it pains me that we aren't together yet, I know it pains you even more because this is your place, your church, your family, and we were designed and created to be together. I want us to be together more than almost anything else in the world right now. The only thing I want more is to know that when we do come back together, you'll be there, that you'll all be here when the doors open, that you'll be healthy and well, that you'll be safe and sound, what I want even more than for us to be together again is to know that we are doing absolutely everything we can to protect you and take care of you. Because that's what Jesus was talking about when he taught us to love one another. That's why we're being so careful and deliberate with these difficult decisions. It's not an overabundance of caution that directs us, not really. What directs our decisions is an overabundance of love. So if you remember nothing else from this message, remember this, you are loved deeply by me and the entire staff and the session and by one another. You, Shandon, are loved extravagantly. But in case you need help remembering, beginning this coming Monday, you and your household, you are welcome to come and spend some time in the sanctuary. To do so, you'll need to reserve a time slot in advance, which you can do by calling Jess Joyner, our church office manager. We'll have times available during business hours, but also some in the morning or evening, because we know that everyone's schedule and availability is different. We'll leave ample space between appointments to allow for airflow and proper cleaning. The sanctuary will look just like you remember it, though there may be a camera and other recording equipment here and there. The Sowers Chapel will be arranged in a more intimate way with prayer stations available for those who wish. The Memorial Garden will also have a prayer station or two available. That outdoor space, that is always open to you, though we do ask that you ensure if another person is present that you would keep a safe distance between you. In addition to opening up our sacred spaces, we are also putting the finishing touches on plans for Oktoberfest here at Shandon. Here's what we envision Oktoberfest looking like. All four Sundays in October, beginning at 5 p.m., we'll have an outdoor event here at the church. Some will be a walkthrough, others will be a drive-through, all of them will be fun. We're waiting on a last few details to be confirmed, and as soon as we have everything in line, we will share all of those plans with you. I can tell you that the first activity on October 4th will be a blessing of the animals. So start preparing your pets now to come and meet us on the church lawn and receive an individual blessing. 
Again, this is just the first Oktoberfest event, the first of four Sundays full of fall fun and fellowship. And I encourage you to try and say that four times fast. We look forward to seeing many of you. And of course, if there are any of you who would like a pet blessing but are not quite yet ready to come to church, we are happy to do that on Zoom or at your home. Because last but certainly not least, our pastoral staff are all now doing what we're calling porch visits, making visits to you at your home, ideally outside on a porch or a driveway or a lawn. But if there's a reason that being outside is not practical for you, let us know. We're also glad to meet with you here at church if that's your preference. Wherever it happens, we hope that you'll call us and connect with us. To meet with Molly or John, contact them directly. To meet with me, you can contact me directly or you can schedule through Jess Joyner in the church office as she has access to my calendar. So to review, come and enjoy some reflection in our sacred spaces by appointment. And mark your calendars for Oktoberfest for every Sunday in October beginning at 5 p.m. And if you would like to visit in person with your pastors, give us a call and we'll come to you. One final word is about worship this Sunday. Sunday morning worship continues to be online only right now, but one advantage to this is that it is easier than ever to have guest preachers join us. This Sunday, September 27th, Reverend Brian Ellison will join us in the pulpit from his home in Kansas City. Brian was a pastor in Missouri for over a decade before leaving that role to become the executive director of the Covenant Network of Presbyterians. The Covenant Network is one of the organizations in our denomination that has worked tirelessly advocating for the full inclusion of LGBTQIA persons in the life of the church and advocating for marriage equality. I've been a member of that board for a number of years now, so I can tell you firsthand that Brian's voice is one worth listening to when it comes to our current ser sermon series about holy conversations. I would be remiss if I didn't also share that both Brian and his partner Troy are dear friends of mine. I regret that you won't get to meet him in person, but I'm delighted that technology allows him to join us in worship. Take good care and peace be with you.